Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get started. Good evening. Welcome to Gloucester City Hall. I don't need a microphone, Mr. Patch, but there are people who do have some trouble hearing, if you don't mind, <laughs> like yourself sometimes. Um, first of all, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, and I know this is our second time that we came to address some of the concerns, and I feel your frustrations, but this time now we're being heard. They'll explain the procedures. I wanted to thank the city councils who are here, Councilor uh, Paul Lumberg, Val Gilman, Councilor Cox. I saw Jamie O'Hara. Is there anyone else here that I... I said Jamie O'Hara. Don't worry, I got them. Um, first of all, um, they're going to have a procedure how you're going to be heard. Everyone's going to have a chance. They have numbers back there. If you don't have a number, they'll tell you how to get a number. It's going to be two minutes. They'll have someone have been holding something up to say, you know, 30 seconds is coming. We want to be able, and he, it's right over there, the 30 seconds. Want to hold it up so they can see it again so they'll know where he is. 30 seconds. Um, so. We understand the frustration. There's uh, the chamber here. There's a lot of small businesses. And what's more important, I have a lot of people that I know that are transits, that they take the train to get to and from work, and that's their only transportation. So we want to give everyone a chance to address their frustrations and find out what's going on and actually so we can gather the right information. Bob Ryan from Cater, thank you for coming. Um, and we need to do something. And Bob, I mean, some of the things I might, as a city council, as a city council, huh, as a um, city mayor, I might have to ask Cater because I know that some of the transportation is not through Cater, but we might have to have Cater because there's some things that are not in there. When Val noticed today that there's not going to be a bus home from West Gloucester to go to Salem or pick it up, so we might need Cater. So we'll work on that. This city supports our citizens and Cape Ann. It's not just Gloucester, it's Rockport, it's Essex. It's always this, this little Cape Ann that we get aside. Working together, as we heard last time, we will come with some conclusion that will be able to help us. So thank you very much. I'm going to introduce our Senator Bruce Tarr, who's always there and actually brought this forward with Representative Ferranti. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Madam Mayor, and good evening. You know, this is the night that we had hoped to have a while ago, where we could come into the room, we could talk about the inconveniences that will be occasioned by the need to do work as a result of the replacement of the Beverly Drawbridge, as well as positive train control, and we could talk about real ways to address that that make sense and will give people some options so that they're able to continue with their lives without incredible disruption. And my most important thing to say at this microphone tonight is to say thank you to everyone who has been involved since we first got together here to say that we need to have a plan of action. Everyone played a role. The Gloucester City Council, the Boards of Selectmen in Manchester and in Essex and in Rockport, certainly the Mayor, the State Representative, and all of you who got involved with putting together, uh, signing a petition, or sending an email, or telling us that you had to have action and had to have change because now we are starting to see a plan of action. So thank you to everyone who joined with us to get to this point tonight. We're going to hear tonight about a plan. The likelihood is that the plan is not perfect because let's face it, when the trains are not operating according to their normal schedule, there is a disruption. And we all have to realize that. The key for us, I believe, is to work together to evolve this plan to the best place it can be so that that disruption is minimized and that we get a safe bridge in Beverly and we get positive train control, which we have seen in instances throughout this country is a necessity for safe operation of rail transportation. We need to have those two things, but we also need to achieve them without major disruption in people's lives. And that's what this effort has been about from the start. I also want to say thanks 
to the folks at the MBTA and the folks that will present this plan tonight. Because when we started in this room, there was, I dare say, almost no plan. Tonight there is a plan. It has multiple facets, it uses multiple tools, and it responds to the needs that we have clearly addressed and amplified through our various communications. Now I hope we can have a positive discussion about that tonight and we can identify issues that may still need to be addressed. We can learn about the, all of the details of the plan and we can move forward to be able to get these jobs done for commuter rail safety, but we can also make sure that we do everything possible to make sure that the adverse effects of the work, of the work schedule, are no more than they absolutely need to be. So thank you to everyone that's been involved in this effort. I look forward to the presentation tonight, as I know all of you do, and uh, I want to introduce State Representative Ann Margaret Ferranti, who has been working uh, every step of the way to make sure that we get positive change and a plan that can work. So, Representative Ferranti. Thank you, Senator. And as the Senator pointed out, thank you to all of you for coming again uh, for yet another hearing on this matter. And uh, as the plan is presented, I want to thank the MBTA for putting the plan together. But I also want to remind everybody in the audience that if there is something that you think is missing from this plan, speak up tonight. I don't want anybody in the audience to think that uh, anything that should be improved upon is not being improved upon or that there's a concern out there. If there is that concern, we want to know about it. So please, as you're listening to this, I don't want you to sit in your seat and think that you don't have the opportunity to make a point or to say something or have something clarified. So I know that these folks have worked hard on this plan. I know that they paid attention to the last hearing that we had. The mayor, the senator, and I are very concerned about what it is that you're concerned about. And I know that I've pledged, and I think the senator is going to join me in this, but don't be surprised if you see us on the train in the next couple of uh, days and weeks because we want to see for ourselves how this is working out. Still feel free to call our offices, but as you hear the plan tonight, I can't stress this enough. If there's something you're concerned about, we need you to speak up and to bring that concern to us uh, out loud so that we can hear it, we can understand it and we can deal with it. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you again for coming up to Gloucester and having this hearing. And with that, where did Rick Pallone go? I'm going to turn the mic over to you for your hearing. Thank you, Representative. <laughs> Senator Tarr, Mayor Taken, thank you for hosting us. Okay, uh, tonight's presentation will be delivered by the MBTA Chief Operating Officer, Jeff Gonneville. Uh, just a quick reminder about the housekeeping and the speaker order. Uh, you have numbers, and don't worry if you, have an, if you don't have a number, we'll give an opportunity at the end of the sequence of numbers for those that uh, perhaps have changed their mind and want to speak a little bit later. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Jeff Gonneville. All right, good evening, everybody, and thank you. Um, first off, I want to thank Representative, the Mayor, uh, Senator Tarr, for the remarks. And um, to be completely honest, the, 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 there are times um, where to be, we get it wrong. And I think in this particular situation, and, 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 and as it relates to, um, I think, the discussions that the MVTA had at the, the beginning process and beginning to discuss both these two critical projects for us, the implementation of the positive train control and the replacement of the Beverly Drawbridge. There was very little that was being offered to, to you, our customers, on alternative service and alternative service options. And uh, frankly, Secretary Pollack and, and uh, General Manager Shortsleeve asked us to go back to the drawing board and really begin to think about what we could offer for supplemental service. 
Um, and we're here tonight with a plan to, to discuss with each of you what we can offer for supplemental service. Um, it is not perfect. It is not perfect by any means. And, and what you're going to hear about is a bus shuttle. And bus shuttles are something that we do a lot in our core system. And I'm sure many of you have seen in the news over the last two years, we've done multiple shutdowns for winter resiliency and other state of good repair projects in the red line, orange line, green line. In this particular case, these particular shuttles are very difficult shuttles for us to do and for us to be able to operate. So I do not want to stand up here today and pretend that this is going to be the, 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 an easy solution or a perfect solution by any means. But it is an alternative and it's something that we're, we can present in and uh, discuss through. Um, we have, and I'm going to introduce a team that we've assembled uh, that can help me answer any questions that you all may have. And to, to echo what Senator Tarr said, we really do want your feedback. Um, we wouldn't be here today, frankly, having this discussion if it wasn't for your feedback. And we really do want to hear what some of your issues and concerns are going to be. Obviously, to be honest, we may not be able to address every single one of those concerns, but what we can do, and if there are items that we can make improvements, we are committed to make those improvements in order to make this impact as, as, as least difficult for all of you as possible. So with that, I'll go ahead and, and uh, maybe I'll introduce the team first. So first, Jody Ray. Where are you, Jody? Jody Ray is our lead for commuter rail operations for the MBTA. Uh, Ryan Koholian is our chief transportation, or excuse me, chief railroad operation officer for, uh, he works for Jody. Corey Lynch is our chief transportation officer for railroad operations. Beth Larkin is the head of our capital delivery project. So she actually is responsible for overseeing both the positive train control project and the Beverly drawbridge repair. John Schwarz is a uh, de deputy director in design and construction department overseeing the Beverly drawbridge project. Dave Carney, why don't you wave Dave. Dave is in charge of our bus operations division for the MBTA. And Dave is also going to be overseeing this particular uh, supplemental bus shuttle for us. And there's a number of other team members that are here in the room as well that can help be able to answer any questions that you all may have as I go through this presentation. So two projects that I spoke about. One is the Beverly Drawbridge reconstruction and the other is the installation of the positive train control. This presentation, or this first half of the presentation, is going to be focused on the Beverly Drawbridge, which is going to require that we have to suspend service north of the drawbridge from July 17th through August 13th. This chart is, depicts exactly what uh, and where we will be functioning or where we'll be running. Service will be able to run from Boston to Salem. We will not be able to run any train service north of the drawbridge. Many people may ask, why can't we just put one or two trains north of the drawbridge and then operate those particular vehicles? And that would be fine, and we could get away doing that if we had the ability to bring trains back across that bridge to fuel them, to be able to maintain them or do any maintenance necessary to them. But unfortunately, we are not going to have that ability to do that. Once the bridge is taken out of service, it will be out and no trains will be able to go across it from July 17th to August 13th. So what that means is that if we did have a locomotive across the other side of that bridge and it did have some sort of a major failure or require some form of vehicle maintenance or the coaches along that consist, we would have no way of being able to getting it back across the bridge to offer any service. And worst off, we would have no other alternatives that are planned for a supplemental service. So we would be stuck with not being able to offer any form of a service. What we're going to be offering is a shuttle, two shuttles that will operate, one from Newburyport, making a stop at Newburyport, Ipswich, Beverly Depot, and then ultimately at Salem. A second bus shuttle that's going to run from Rockport, Gloucester, Manchester by the Sea, into Salem. And I'll talk a little bit further about that as we go through the presentation. Uh-oh. Here we go. Um, Right now, these are some other options that we, we can ask that you consider uh, for, for alternatives. Um, one is if, if you are available to, to commute to a different line from the, the Newburyport, Rockport line, move over to the Haverhill line and the Anderson Woodburn parking lot. We have a multiple, a good amount of parking spaces that are available and we have capacity on that particular line to be able to take additional, additional customers. Lynn, the Lynn commuter rail station right now, we are at a typical uh, day, we are about a 57% capacity. So we have available spaces at those particular lots. 
In addition, what we're planning and committing that we are going to do is we're going to identify a key list of our commuter stations and our commuter parking lots, and we're going to tweet out and on, have on our website every half an hour what the capacity is for parking at each and every one of these individual stations. So if you do decide, rather than taking the supplemental bus shuttle, that you would prefer to commute to another station and then get on, get on the, the, the commuter rail line, we will give you and provide you the information every half an hour of where we are at for our parking capacity on that particular line. So the bus shuttle that we're offering, again, one shuttle will operate from Newburyport, making stops at Newburyport, Ipswich, Beverly Depot, and Salem. A second shuttle on the Rockport line, Rockport, Gloucester, Manchester by the Sea, Beverly Depot, and Salem. And then in addition to that, we are essentially going to run a nonstop shuttle that is just going to run a complete circle between Beverly Depot and Salem. These shuttles themselves, we are estimating that there will probably be about 70 buses that are offer, operating at any given time on these particular shuttles. We're going to get into a, a schedule that we've developed for the Newburyport and Rockport shuttle as well that coincides with trains departing from Salem Station. It's important to, to, to mention two, two points with this. First off, um, and this kind of goes without saying, obviously, but we're going to offer free parking at all of our stations north of Salem Station. Uh, in addition to that, we are also not going to be servicing many of the routes and many of the stops that I know many of you are obviously very familiar with between each of these individual, individual, individual stations. And the reason for that is two things. One, that the logistics of pulling a bus in and out of these stations is very difficult for some of these. And then the other is if we made every single station stop, this bus ride would just be unbelievably long and completely, completely unuseful for, as a way or a mode of transportation to get into the, into the city. So what we, are, what we are proposing is that there would be stops at each of these key stations, and that's where we transport people into Salem. And then from Salem, we will be transferring you to a commuter rail, and then you'll be back on a commuter rail train into Boston. This is the schedule. This is completely illegible right now, I admit. Um, I know that each of you, I believe, a handout was given, correct? Linda, there was a handout that was given? So there's a handout that was given with the schedule. Um, the, the schedule is, again, not ideal. I think you can see the trip times that we've estimated. When we put the trip times together for, for the, the particular shuttles, we've looked at the uh, planned road construction that's going to be going on along the shuttle routes. We looked at and added in some time for, for traffic built into these schedules. And we also added in a 10-minute dwell time at each one of the stations along the stops in order to be able to, to anticipate and and um, uh, make up time along the way. The trains are, the schedules are also set up for each of these individual runs where we are coinciding back with commuter trains that will be leaving Salem Station. And we're separating both the, the Newport and Rockport lines so that the buses are not arriving at Salem Station all at the same time. So what I mean by that is that at Salem Station, we will have about seven buses as planned, arriving at Salem Station, and then another seven buses at the peak that would be coming in. From a fare standpoint, uh, we will be, anyone that is operating or running along the line will only be required to have a Zone 3 fare. Um, and and uh, that is something that we'll be offering throughout the entire duration of this particular process. So that'll be a Zone 3 fare uh, for the July and August months of where we are operating this particular Oper operating this particular shuttle. Uh, in addition, uh, we are and have been in conversations with our corporate pass and our corporate pass holders, and um, they have all been, been notified in this particular area that a Zone 3 monthly pass is what would be required. And uh, certainly, if anyone has or knows of anyone that had any issues with pre-purchasing a zone higher than a zone three during this duration. Um, I'll give out my information, my email, and you can email me directly, and I'll be more than happy to make sure that that happens. But the team, the team themselves are here, and we are committed to make sure that anyone that has already purchased a pass above a zone three, or if their corporate passes have already made a payroll reduction uh, above the charge of a zone three, that they will be reimbursed by the MBTA. And uh, I myself have spoke with, spoken personally to the heads of this particular division and they've walked me through the process that they're going to use to make sure that refunds are given very expeditiously. 
weekend service. For weekend service, uh, there is a project that is referred to as our positive train control project. Uh, this positive train control project is something that uh, we are federally mandated to do. Um, all railroads across the United States are required to implement positive train control system. Ultimately, when this is done, not just the MBTA, but any commuter railroad and freight railroad across the United States is going to be a far safer system. Um, we are behind schedule at the MBTA to get this done. Um, and this is something that now we have to work very quickly, expeditiously, and efficiently in order to be able to execute. Um, one of the questions that, that has come up a lot through this particular process, and frankly it's a question that I have asked as well to, to Beth and her team, is why does it require us to shut down the entire line during this entire duration of time? And the duration of time is starting July 8th up until September 30th. And the easiest answer is there's going to be multiple crews working across the entire right of way during that duration to, to, to work and get this work done as efficiently as possible. Um, so the, thus requiring that we have to take out the entire line during that time. For alternatives, again, we are offering and, and going to begin putting forth information as it relates to parking capacity that we have available at all of our, all, all of our other stations. So uh, any customers looking to commute inbound during uh, those particular uh, weekends that we are going to be shut down could transfer over to the Haverhill line uh, and, and pick up the train at Anderson Woburn or to the Blue Line at Wonderland Station. We are going to be offering as well a supplemental bus shuttle. Uh, the bus shuttle will be very similar to the shuttles that we are offering uh, on the weekday on both branches, the Newburyport and the Rockport branch, with the exception of the shuttle will run, instead of, of, of terminating at Salem and then transferring to a commuter train, will run directly to North Station in Boston, where we'll be leaving people around Causeway Street. Um, these shuttles will be running to a schedule that is very similar to a schedule uh, to the train schedules um, and we will be operating uh, com coaches or buses along this particular shuttle itself. It's also important to note that we will not be running these shuttles with MBTA buses. We have private carriers that we're currently negotiating with uh, as of right now, and there will be uh, uh, one private character, carrier, possibly two private carriers that will be using commuter coaches uh, that we will be using for both these weekday and weekday, weekend uh, shuttles. Zone three monthly passes, again, uh, will, be, will be accepted, and um, we will also be selling a round trip uh, fares of $10 at, uh, at North Station uh, during the weekend months as well. And this is the schedule that we'll be offering, and this schedule pretty much mirrors the schedule that uh, we would have for the, the typical commuter rail service. Is that pretty accurate, Corey? So according to Corey, it's a little bit more frequent. And if anyone has any questions about any of this post today's meeting, um, obviously, as we go forward, 617-222-3200. Uh, one of the issues that, that actually was brought up, and, and last week I gave a briefing of this to the state legislature, and one of the questions that came up was that at the MBTA, we have the ability, or it happens very frequently, where we'll call or ask one person, and we get one answer, and we'll call and ask another person, and we'll get another answer. And that is an area that, that certainly we went back, we talked about, and we have this one number, 3200, which is the MBTA's general line, but we have identified and talked through and assured that, and I have been assured, that the teams that will be answering your calls will be prepared to answer any questions that you may have as it relates to, to these particular diversions, and really knowing the details pretty intimately of these particular diversions. And if they don't, they will put you in touch with someone who does. And frankly, I will leave here today and I'll give every one of you my emails and you can feel free to, to email me my, yourself as well if you have any questions as it relates to, to, uh, to this. So that's what we have left for a, pr a planned presentation. Um, and again, we're hoping that, that this is a, 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 we can continue to have a good dialogue, answer any questions that you may have as it relates to these shuttles. There has been a lot of work behind the scenes and, and um, you know, as we go forward and you ask your questions, um, we will have the team that's best available to answer them. And again, we may not have the best answer, the perfect answer, but if there are areas where we can make improvements or, 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 or optimize our plan, we will certainly be willing to do that. So. Rick, I don't know if you want me to. Well, 
right here. I don't mind standing up, thank you. I'm Denise Donnelly, I live in Rockport and I'm a member of the Rockport Board of Selectmen. First of all, I'd like to request that you stop using the term supplemental service. For many people, it's not supplemental, it's their only form of transportation. Um, second of all, I guess I have two more questions. One is, um, would it be possible to set up a shuttle that would go only to Gloucester and Rockport? The reason I ask is that I work in downtown Boston and I make the drive often. Today, I left my home in Rockport and I got to Boston in an hour and 45 minutes without stopping in Gloucester, Manchester by the Sea, and the, and the other stops that you're planning to stop at. So I don't see how it's possible for a bus to leave Rockport and get into North Station an hour and a half later. It's just not gonna happen. Um, second, um, given the fact that you've got uh, such complex projects to move forward with did it, th that require really detailed um, project plans that have dependencies and contingencies and all sorts of things, um, did you ever consider changing the time, the dates during which you were going to do this um, construction and put in the PTC, because as you know, for towns like Gloucester and Rockport, um, we, our businesses rely on the summer. So you're basically going to <laughs> write a death sentences for businesses in Rockport, certainly, who rely on the train to bring tourists to the town. I don't see tourists sitting through an hour and a half, a two hour, a three hour, bus ride to get to Rockport to go to the beach for an hour and then take another bus ride back into to Boston. Did you ever consider moving the dates to later in the fall? Um, and if not, why not? And finally, my last comment is um, there are two words in the term public transportation. One is transportation, and I don't want to beat a dead horse over this, but the other is public, and that's all of us here and all the people that Don Campbell, who's also here from the Rockport Board of Selectmen, speak for. And I find it really uh, unfathomable how you came up with this plan without first soliciting the input of the people who are affected by the change. Well, we'll use it for the next question. Um, I'd like to also recognize Representative Brad Hill, who is present in the hall. Thank you. So I think I'll, I can answer a couple of the, the, the points. I think first off, the, the supplemental service, um, you know, that is, that is a phrase that we use internally within operations. So I, I certainly apologize if I offended anyone by, by using that particular term. Um, as it relates to the scheduling of this, this is... Uh, Certainly a project that we have to get done, and it's, it's a project that um, there is really no good time in order to get it done. Your question, though, is a very good question. I can tell you that this is something I sat in a meeting with Secretary Pollack where she grilled the team and asked the team those very same questions, and it was a project schedule. It's the, in order to get this done as expeditious, expeditiously and as efficiently as possible, it, this time was chosen. Understood. So I, I but I'll address your point. We, we are through our corporate pass office. We have reached out to all of our corporate pass providers. I have seen the list of the names. So we know all of our providers that issue corporate passes. We have discussed this with them. We have presented this to them. If you have an issue with that, please let us know. And, and I'm not kidding. Please let us know. And I, I, I will commit that you will get that taken care of. And I'll give you my card before I leave tonight. Again, there is no perfect solution here, and that is something right now tonight that I cannot commit that we'll be able to do. We should probably move on to question number two. So any and all comments tonight, the team is taking down notes, and yes, I, I, so I will tell you that comments tonight that are received, we're gonna take them down, but again, obviously I cannot commit to that. Just a, a point of order, please. Um, people have signed up and are, have numbers and would like to recognize them in order first and then open it up to the hall. So number two, please. Sir, number two. All right, we'll move on to number three. Three. Four. Okay. 
Sure. Hey, I'm Barbara Collins from Gloucester. I'm an old lady, as you can see, and I don't see all as well as I used to. I find these schedules very hard to read. Is there going to be something more readable? And the color is going to be a bit better so that I can photocopy them and send them to people who come to visit me and so that I can see them when I travel? Yes, absolutely. So that was a handout that the team has put together for tonight and tonight's presentation. All of this information is available on the website today. Where's Rose Trist, correct? So all of this information is on the, available on the website and it will be available the same as our typical schedules are right now. Hard copies, are there hard copies will be available, everybody? Yes, the team is not. Where, where can someone get a hard copy? Thank you. Speaker number five, please. Um, I'll, I'll yield the floor to number six because I don't have any pressing questions. But as, as the same group of operating officials from the MBTA here that were here when they were discussing the Anasquam River Bridge questions, um, the technical expertise type things, are they are they here tonight? I don't know. So okay. Be on, on, uh, but I can find Jody. We, do, did you know? John Schwartz. Hold on. We'll get you a microphone, John. Stand by. All right. Talk off. Speaker on. number six, please. Hi. Um, so I have a question regarding the capacity of these buses that you're going to be running. So you're talking about replacing basically four or five other stops along this line. How, how many people do you think you're gonna be able to fit on these buses from Rockport down to Salem or Beverly? I mean, have, have you ever ridden the train and see how yes, packed it yes. gets in the morning? Actually, I, saw, oh, I can do better than that. So um, very good question, very good question. So we're going to be operating commuter coaches. Commuter coaches, the coaches that we're looking at have a seating capacity about 45 to 50, depending on the model of the coach. What we've done is we have passenger counts that were taken on the line in 2016. So we actually have hard, hard physical data, hard physical numbers of the passenger counts that happened in 2016. Our service planning team took all those counts down from every train and laid them all out. In addition to that, over the last two weeks, we've had a team of our service planners and interners, interns and contractors out riding the trains, taking hard physical counts over the last two weeks. So we're using exact ridership data that we have now throughout the entire service day to validate the information that we had back in 2016. So one thing I can say as it relates to these bus shuttles, we've been doing a lot of them on the core system, and the, 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 so meaning the red line, orange line, green line, and it's a process that we put in place there, and it helps us predict what the right number of buses is to run in the service. We use that same model for this particular, to develop how we would run this particular service. So we do feel that we have a very good estimate on the amount of customers and passengers that we're going to need and the staging of the buses uh, along to be able to, to handle the passenger loads that will be necessary. But again, I do not want to stand up here and tell everyone and, and, and present to everyone that this is going to be an easy shuttle for us to operate. Uh, this is something that we're going to have to have a lot of staff in the field with. Uh, our transit police is going to be doing some, some traffic details for us and some critical and some key areas as well, particularly closer into Salem, uh, to be able to ensure that, that our buses are able to flow through some of these congested areas. But by no means do I want to present that this is an easy shuttle or be an easy shuttle for us to operate logistically. I think we have number six over here. Did we skip one? <laughs> That's it. Oh, you have a nine. Is there a six or an eight here? Six, seven. Six, seven. We've seven. tried seven. Seven? Sorry. Here we are. Gonna go to the podium. All right. Yeah, absolutely. That's that should be live, that mic. I'm gonna take this too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little more comfortable up here. Um 
Melissa Cox, City Council Ward 2. Just curious how you're, commu you're communicating to the commuters about the bus service. Because my husband's a commuter, and he didn't have any idea about tonight's meeting because there was no communication. It's on. It's, it's not on? OK. Um, so I'm just cu curious how you're going to communicate about the bus service. So that also is a very good question. I want to, Rose, why don't I throw it to you if you don't mind? Why don't you talk a little bit? Let's give you a microphone, though, Rose. You can. Thank on. you. Okay. So yeah, last on. week, I think it was um, the middle of last week, we had the plan to, uh, for the public meetings. And when we had that, we put out a press release and then we put it on our website as well. Um, it was uh, today, and we handed that out at North Station to commuters last Friday. Um, and then today at two o'clock, we were able to put this plan that you saw tonight on our website. And it's now, it, you know, now that this thing is live, you will see in the coming days um, more and more information along the line. And our Conductors have now been notified, so they should be able to answer your questions tomorrow. And I think you know the communication strategy is to reach customers along their commute. So we're going to try to get you in our stations. We'll give you messages. We're going to get you at the ticket booths. We're going to get you at the fare vending machines. We're going to get you on the platforms. We're going to get you with our conductors. And over the course of time, um, I think you know uh, the hope is that everyone will know about the plan. Um, for the stations that will not be served during this, we will have messages in those stations as well. Any other questions about communications? Or, or well, suggestions, frankly. A lot, of, uh, a lot of what you're talking about tonight, you're saying that you're going to deliver these messages at a North Station. Not everybody is going to be going to North Station. Um, they could be communicating between Lynn and Chelsea. I'm just. Yeah. Having North Station be the point place it's not, is it's, not the it's most not, it's, effective. It, it, right. It's not the only place. So imagine every, pla every um, station along the line, right? Um, there'll be messages at every station along the line. And the conductors will paper? Know, you know. What is it? In paper form? Uh, yeah. We, we, um, you know the glass cases on the platforms? Mm -hmm. So we're going to put messages up on those glass cases. We're going to use the digital message boards with, with messages. Um, in some of the stations that will not be served, we'll have A-frames and signage. Uh, we've talked about doing variable message boards on the highways that lead to some of the bigger stations. So yeah, we're not just focused on, on North Station. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a question about the monthly pass. You say that it's going to be a Zone 3 thing, but you're starting on the 17th, so you're halfway in a month. So commuters that are starting here on July 1, from July 1 to July 15, they're taking the full distance at a zone five. But then after mid-month, you're talking about a zone three. So I'm, it's my is it understanding. Is the entire month? It, so July and August, zone three. It'll be a zone three fare for entire July month. for okay. the entire month. Um, so the idea is the first two weeks, do you think you're riding high for a zone three? Do you only pay for a zone three? Okay. And then at the end, it's sort of bookended. At the end, same scenario. Even if you're riding at a zone three, you only pay for a zone three. So you get a month. Okay, Correct. so both mo months. All right. Correct. And, um, and again, if anyone has prepaid or their corporate pass holders, but, but not to, to, we have had communications with all of them, but it, not to say that there will not be a few customers that may have already purchased or had a payroll reduction of that amount. If that has happened, let us know and we will reimburse them. Okay. Um, the bus shuttle, I read that there were not going to be any bikes allowed. Is that true? So there will be no bike racks on the fronts of those buses, and there will be no bike. Th so, and there will be no bikes allowed on the buses themselves. That is correct, and that is really being done for, if you can imagine, logistical reasons. We 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 do know, and even getting back to an earlier question, we do know that these vehicles are going to be filled 45, 50 passengers per bus. Um, fitting bikes on the buses along with that would be very difficult. What we have been doing, however, is working with our partner partners with MassDOT and Hubway, as well as. Um, um, so a team helping out. Who was the name of the other the other firm? What is it? 
Zagster to see what we can do for putting at our stations a few of the ride share, uh, bike share uh, uh, kiosks. We can't commit to that, but we are in discussions right now to see what we can do at some of these stations to put some of these bike share kiosks. So I know for a fact that there is a handicapped gentleman that takes the train in the morning and his only way to commute once he gets to where he needs to be is through his bicycle. Um, is there going to be a handicap provision or, I mean, an ADA all of these, thing? All of, these, all of these buses are required to be ADA accessible. They will all have lifts on them to be able to board the, the passenger. I'm not talking about a wheelchair, though. I'm talking about his bike. His bicycle is what he uses once he gets to where he needs to go for his job. He is a bus bike repair person, and he needs his bicycle. So what we can do tonight, certainly, it, it, we, have, we have our accessibility department. Any individual customers that really have any individual unique needs, we will find a way to make sure that they're serviced. OK. Um, she just said she'll take, take the gentleman's name and she'll, she'll, she'll ensure that we, we look into that issue. But we, we'll, we will ensure that he is accommodated. We rely heavily on tourism, uh, Gloucester and Rockport does. So how are you going to be training your staff to answer questions about Gloucester and Rockport and its accessibility during this time from North Station? So that is a good question. Um, what we are working on right now is th with our private carrier, once we, with the private carrier and co private contractor, we're going to put together a familiarization program for each of the operators that will be operating this particular shuttle. Um, so certainly if there are any, we are more than willing to work with the mayor's office, any, any or, or yourself or anyone that's interested in providing us any information. Uh, Rose Yates can give you her contact information and um, please provide her with any details that you'd like to see in there. But we'll make sure that they are familiarized. Okay. Um, and my last thing, only because you gave us the number for complaints, um, the $10 fare you're saying is only going to be sold in Boston. What about if you're coming from the North Shore into Boston on the bus on the weekends? One more. Rose, we couldn't hear that. I'm sorry. So it will be available on the mobile ticket app. Okay, what if you're not savvy? Yeah. What if so, so the, the reality is with our private bus contractor, the private bus contractor won't be able to collect fares. Right. So we're going to collect fares one way as a round trip. So if you're coming from the Rockport or Gloucester area to Boston for the day, maybe go see the Red Sox or whatever, you'll pay the fare on the way home. You'll come into town for free. You will you pay your fare on the way home. So it's a round trip fare. It's so it's ten dollars no matter what. If you just devil's advocate, if you get on the bus from Gloucester and you go to Boston and you don't end up on the return commute, you pretty much have a free ride into Boston. And on the way back, it is a ten dollar fare, which is still a pretty good deal, um, considering it a round trip. Okay. All right. So the app and then North Station. Correct. Thank you. Would you still like to comment? Hello. I just uh, I spoke at the last meeting to great extent, so I'll keep it short. I just want to thank Senator Tarr and Representative Ferrante for all the hard work you've done. Uh, very much appreciated. Also, Representative Brad Hill, if you're here, and to our mayor as well. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, I haven't had time to look through it entirely, but I'm pleased that you came up with something. I, I, I'm glad that you listened to all of us who depend solely on the train to get to work, don't have extra vehicles, the luxury of that. I only have two questions. One, I understand the zone three monthly pass. Great. What about if you're just an interzone customer, such as myself? I work in Lynn. Will I be only paying for an interzone three, or am I still charged a zone three pass? And what and how much is a zone three pass? So I'm going to have to defer to the railroad operations team. Did you hear the question, Corey Ryan? Hey, Corey.
So interzone, two zones. Okay, so I'll just buy an interzone two monthly pass. And that should get me. Okay. Okay. Next question. I find this unacceptable for weekend transportation to Lynn. Where I work, where many people volunteer, many people go to the North Shore Community College. From Salem to Boston, typically a lot of people use that Chelsea Lynn uh, train during the weekends. And now we have nothing except for city buses. So I want to understand how you can fill that back in. I think it's unacceptable to abandon everybody between Salem and Boston on the weekends. So what, one of the things, and that's actually something we did discuss as, as, and looked at what other alternatives are available. Um, I think there is a good number of, and, and, and what the team has kind of presented back to us is that there is a good number of, as you said, inner city buses, but our buses that can offer supplemental service or service that would give you to, to be able to at least service those two stops. Again, it is not ideal, and we know it's not ideal, but there is other alternative service options. So I will be taking a shuttle bus from Gloucester to Salem, taking a city bus to Lynn to start my job for the day. So that adds a half hour commute to my morning. I get up a half hour earlier, but on the way home, it's going to add an hour and a half to my commute. So I normally get home at 6.30. I'll be getting home at 8 o'clock at night on weekends. That's not ideal. It's far from ideal. I think a another look has to be uh, given to Lynn. And that's the end of my questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we are on number 10, unless there's a number seven left in the room. Hi, um, I have a clarification question on the bus. So are you saying there will only be one bus leaving from Rockport for each one of these times, even during rush hour? No, 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 okay. no, 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 okay. no, no, there are, there are, we, 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 I actually have a chart right behind me in, in my file, that, but there are, in many cases, there are five to six buses okay. that are going to be okay. working almost like a consist along, along that particular route. Okay, that's good, because there's way more than 45 or 50 people during rush hour. Uh, my second question is, so given traffic and, and things like that, and the 10 minute window when you get to Salem, if you miss that train, you obviously would get the next one or the next one. Will you be adding extra cars to the Salem train so that, because those trains are full that going That is a Boston. good question. And uh, we've been working very closely with uh, the team at Keolis to make sure that yes, we're gonna be adding service. So what we'll be doing is there is, a, how many trains are, are not running on the, the schedule? It's only like two, right, Corey? Yeah, because, I mean, it's possible that we might have three busloads of people getting on the same train, given, you know, if there's a traffic issue or something like that. Right, you'll have to, yeah, in, in, a, in a case of a, of a traffic back, <coughs> correct, so maybe your, your Rockport bus got delayed, and, and they're arriving at the same time with right. the report train, you are correct. Yeah, possible. okay. And, and just a f uh, final comment, I, I do hope you step up the training for the people in North Station, because I've gone to that office repeatedly, asking them questions, you know, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, and, and they act like I'm from Mars or something, you know, I don't know, not my job, I don't have any information, so I really hope you do step that yeah, up. And, 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 and admittedly, we're going to have to, and um, th this particular uh, the, the shuttle that we're offering right now and this, this, this alternative service is the plan has really just been finalized. So because of that, our employees have not had the answers. And, and if you speak with the team here from Keolis, they will tell you that their conductors, their staff members have been chomping at the bit to answer questions about what's happening and what's going on. And we just didn't have the, that, that information to be able to give to them. They have that, they're going to have that now. And certainly uh, the, the, the team at North Station that is there to answer your questions will be very well prepared to, to, to answer and deal with yeah, that. Yeah, because uh, you know there have been many times lately that um, some of the shorter trains like from Boston to uh, Beverly 
have been, uh, you know, uh, canceled, and then the next train comes up, and then takes longer because it stops at every stop. And you know, I talked to the supervisor there and said, "Do you realize that there are people that are catching buses like I do when I get to the train station sure. to get home? I catch a bus. Sure. If I am a half an hour late, I have no bus. That's right. So, right. you know, that's sort of the part of the whole sort of gestalt of this whole thing is to, to you know, sure. really. And 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 the woman said, "Really." People take buses to get up when they get off the train. So, uh, you know, I mean, yeah. this, the training of these folks you know, needs to be expanded yep. Un a little understood. bit. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. We have about 23 more. So number 11, I see 12 is here. Is there anyone with a number 11? 11 right here. Right over here. Okay. So I'm Val Gilman, um, city councilor um, in Gloucester. And I was here at the first meeting and I did want to briefly just thank the city council and the Rockport city council for joining with us and developing a resolution in addition to all the work that um, our senator and state rep and our mayor have done. So I truly appreciate that. Um, I've been, um, I have a lot of constituents in my ward that rely on the, the train. And so I've done quite a bit of thinking about this. And I'm a process person, so I'm going to throw out a couple of thoughts. Okay. Um, first of all, I, too, agree with Councillor Donnelly um, from Rockport that it just seems like putting a person, starting them in Rockport, and then having them go to Gloucester, that's not a big deal because it's kind of on their route. It's not that far. It's a mile and then back to the highway. It gets to be really bad once you start getting into Manchester, and then getting into Beverly, and then getting into Salem. So I really feel very strongly that people that travel via train like options. And I think you need to really think about having a couple of the options during rush hour, a direct route from Rockport, Gloucester to Salem, number one. And if you want to do whatever you want to do with Beverly and um, in Manchester, but I'm just speaking for Rockport and Gloucester right now. I think that, that uh, you have a, a one leaving at 6.42 in the morning and another at 8.44. If you could make those early morning rides nonstop to Salem, I think that that would help us out a lot, my opinion, just because I'm always commuting into those. Sure. Um, those areas and the traffic is horrible and this isn't a bunch of yeah. people like singing I'm riding on the bus and this is really fun. Yeah, you know, it's people trying to get to yeah, work understood. And so I think that that would cut down a lot I understand some of the trips might need to take all those right. But let people have the options and decide what they want so I would just suggest that when you take these thoughts back that you think long and hard about that so if you have follow-up questions, I'll, if I can answer that, if that's all right. So we have, and, and we have and we will, I guess is the best way to answer that. So Dave and my, myself and Dave and, and Dave's team have had a lot of discussions about that. What we're presenting right now is what our intent is to run. Um, we know that as we begin actually running the system, running the, the alternative service, the shuttle, we may have to make those type of decisions, but we have to present and we have to give our customers today, now, an explanation of what's going to happen. If we can improve upon that, we are going to do that. So what I mean by that is, let's say at, at, at Gloucester, that bus is full or about at capacity. The odds are very good. We're gonna have operation staff at every single one of these station stops. So they're gonna make the decision that that bus 1234 is gonna express now right to Salem because of the fact that it's at capacity or if they know that there is two, one or two buses that are not that are that are empty right behind that bus and that who is waiting at the further stations further down down below so these are the things logistically that we'll be doing on the fly in the field in order to be able to address the situation but for as it relates to telling everyone today this is the schedule this is how we're going to follow the schedule but we will have the ability in the field to make decisions to express buses right into Salem once we have an idea of what the capacity need is further down the line and also uh, buses behind that. And just to piggyback on that, this is for July 17th to August 13th. So we still have five and a half weeks until this starts. From a planning standpoint, I would hope that you would 
figure this out a couple of weeks before the start date rather than playing it by ear and getting into this first week and then saying, oh, we can express someone because people need to know early to plan. No, no I'm sorry, I should be very clear. The schedule is the schedule. We are going to operate to that schedule. So where it says at Gloucester that we will have a bus arriving at that particular time, we will have a bus that's going to be arriving at that particular time. However, if it's five buses that are running along as a consist along that particular route, and two of those buses are at capacity or just about at capacity, and we're getting a report from the person in the field saying, I've only got 10 people standing by at the platform right now, we are not going to take those two buses and have them continue that are loaded, have them run the rest of the route. We will just express them to to, to uh, Salem Station. And it's, it's, it's how we operate these shuttles also and on the red line, orange line, and green line. It's an effective way of doing it. And it just, it, it will only improve upon people's commutes. So what you're seeing for the schedule right now is based upon what we believe the schedule to be if the bus is made every single stop along the way. Does that answer your question? It does. I don't necessarily like what you're saying, but, um, you know, but I, so you're basically saying you, you have to kind of wait and see what happens. And a person's not going to, they're going to get in the bus or in the, and they're not going to know, are they going direct or not? Is that? So, so the, if, if you're getting on a bus and the, the, again, these are, the, the plan will be that every bus is going to make every single station stop. If the bus is loaded with 45 passengers and I was the person running that particular shuttle at Gloucester, I would stand up and I would ask, is there anyone here that is traveling into any of the other stops or you go, everyone going to Salem? If everyone raises their hand and says, we're going to Salem, we may not go to Beverly. We would just express directly to Salem because I would also know that there's an empty bus right behind this bus that those passengers could get on for the further progressive stops. It only just helps those particular customers for that period of time to get to Salem a little bit earlier than the schedule. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, my second is I would suggest that in, instead of just doing um, tweets that you might want to keep an ongoing Facebook page or some other vehicle because there aren't there aren't that many people that do Twitter all the time, sure. so it would be good to have that information available in oh. terms of the, that was for how much room is at all the different Parking garages, lots. correct, correct. So I, okay. I, I would make that suggestion that you think of other options. We can certainly do that. I think our, our plan right now is website and, and uh, Twitter, but I think Facebook is something we can do as well, correct, Rose? All right, that's okay. a good suggestion, thank and you. And my final is just something, um, my background is human resources, and I just um, have a suggestion that um, maybe the MBTA could write a letter to uh, Globe North. Uh, two weeks ago, there was a letter saying that our weekend um, service is off for this summer. And uh, it would be really nice that maybe MBTA could do something proactive to say, you put this new system in and this is a way to, you can get to Gloucester in Rockport and try to help us with a little advertisement that we lost two weeks ago. I don't know if any of you read that, but it was on the left side of the front page of Globe North and it was very clear that we were gonna be struggling this summer because we didn't have any more train service on weekends. So if you could, maybe as an organization, think of doing something proactive. That's a good suggestion. Um, that would be really cool to us as your customers and as a tourist industry here. And then my final thought, this might be a little far-fetched, but I'm, I'm looking for a suggestion um, and, and to see if everyone likes this idea, but I think it would be nice if the MBTA did a letter to the HR departments and possibly the CEOs of the companies who have corporate pass people, tell them what the issue is, and suggest to them that maybe they might want to consider flex time this summer during this four-week period, or Monday through Thursday and allow people to telecommute for those four Fridays, or just give them some suggestions that they might want to think about with their employees who are definitely going to be stressed out trying to get to work. So, you know, you have the relationship with these folks because you do the corporate passes, you know who they are, and I think it would be really cool if you could get them to be sensitive 
to all of the people here that are going to be struggling, and maybe they would do some nice things. Okay. Those like are, give people Fridays really off or something, Rose, you and have let those, them work right? from home. Yep. Well, that, those are three so, good situations. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Councilor, we didn't, I didn't get your name. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Val Gilliman. Thank you, Councilor. We're, we're trying to be, um, um, have good discretion and allow your elected officials maybe a little extra time to have question and answers. I just want to remind you that we, I think we have 34 people that requested to do questions, so we're going to try and be a little bit better. I see the time, you know, I'm supposed to be the, the gatekeeper here, so we'll move on to where are we at, number 12 now. And if, we, if, you, if a question's already been asked or answered, you know, don't feel the need to repeat it. If you have specific questions you want to address with staff afterwards, that's also a good way to do so. So go ahead, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I'll try to be uh, brief. Uh, I mean, I find this all amazing. Uh, there's so much goal. I work for a state contractor as well, and I'm pretty sure if I went in and said there's going to be a disruption in service, and my first reaction was, you can all go screw yourselves. I'd probably be in a meeting like this one, except it would be much smaller, and it would be very brief. Now, you guys have a public concession, a monopoly, granted by the state, and now you say there's 11 communities that you won't serve at all, willy-nilly, or is this a preview of things to come? Uh, you pull up here with state plates and probably a state gas card, on your private transportation in your, in your pants pockets now. Uh, and that must be sweet. So you do what you want, whenever you want, and who do you actually answer to? At my job, if I said I can do this and that and this, but here's 11 things I can't do, uh, I would probably be fired. Now, Kelios, when they took this contract, surely did an assessment of all of this before they took the contract, but now they say take it and like it or lump it. And basically what you're saying to us here is, at first we didn't want to do anything for you, but you made a little bit of noise. Now we're going to do this, and that's all that we could do, and you should be grateful, okay? That your problems are the important problems, and they should be our problems, okay? That we should worry about you and your profit margin and, you know, and whether it's convenient for you. And where do you get the goal to do that? So I think... Okay, you have, you have a responsibility. You took on a contract. Okay, if you need two or three times as much buses, who says you can't do that? So I, Live up to your promises. So I, I will tell you this. There is no question, no question that, that um, the MBTA's initial response to this is is and and wasn't what we wanted to offer who do i report to i report to general manager brian shortsleeve and i report to the secretary pollock um, and and um, i can easily say to you that i am here tonight representing them and as a senior manager of the mbta to really to discuss and present this look the 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 the, the these upgrades, the Beverly Drawbridge, the Beverly Drawbridge, I've been at the MBTA now for 17 years, I've worked my way up the ranks, and I can tell you I heard about that Beverly Drawbridge, and I actually was part of the team that led years ago coming up with the fixes for that Beverly Drawbridge. You might recall that we actually had to manufacture the parts for that ourselves in Everett Shops. I was overseeing Everett Shops at that point in time for the authority. So the Beverly Drawbridge is something that we all know, I know each of you knows, is something that we have to do. So it, so I, I, but I will say, listen, no, I, I, and, and, and again, we certainly know and we can feel and understand your frustrations. We're offering alternative service right now that is not ideal. We know it's not ideal. Make it ideal. Make it more ideal. It, What's wrong with that? Right now, as far as putting buses on the line, and if it's, if it's more buses that are necessary, we are prepared to do that as we go forward. But we feel the number of buses that we're putting forward right now is enough to be able to offer us a reasonable service. I agree. I agree. This screws me so badly, I can't even express. All right. Normally, I'm the Those need to be included. I, again, we put this, this shuttle together to be as efficient for all of our customers as possible. You're not taking care of the customers of the public. So, that's some, that's your understood. I understand. We appreciate all comments, um, and we're tr just trying to get everyone in here this evening. Um, speaker number 13. Is there a 13? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Don Campbell. Is this thing on? Okay. Don Campbell, Rockport Board of Selectmen. Um, I've got to keep my notes with me here, otherwise I'll lose a little bit of track. But I'd like to thank um, you, Madam Mayor, the City Council, and our legislative contingent, along with the T, for being here. This is important. Everybody gets a chance to, to air their grievances, and, and that's part of the process. Um, I'll, get, I'll be real quick, and I'm not expecting an answer in between each question. I do have a few of them, and you can answer them as you see fit after that. Okay. Um, just some quick observations. Understanding that this project has to be done, which we can all agree that it does, um, why did we wait till the last minute when it appears that no rescheduling is possible? Um, there's never a good time for something like this. There really isn't. But you've picked the absolute worst possible time. Um, from the, from the merchants in Rockport to the commuters that are here tonight, you hear the frustration. But we've picked it at a time when, when rescheduling is not possible, or so it seems. Perhaps it is. My assumption is that it's federally mandated and perhaps there are deadlines related to that. But it's a bit disappointing that we're coming here now and asked to swallow a pill that nobody really wants to swallow. Um, so I'll get into my, my questions. And number one would be really an operational thing in a day-to-day, -day, minute by minute actually. As problems are identified, and they most definitely will be, how well is the T equipped to adapt to implement those changes as quickly as possible? Who is directly responsible for implementing those changes? That way, if something happens, we don't have to wait. We have a project that has a two-month span, pretty much. If we have a problem and it takes a month to solve it, that's not going to help us. So we need to get on the problems as quickly as we can. So a direct point of contact, whether that's you or the number that you put up there earlier, I think that would be very helpful. Um, when, when uh, Councillor Gilman spoke earlier about the alert system, I know in Rockport, we simple folk have a very easy process of text alerts. Perhaps there's a text alert process that you could put up, and that's right up to the minute right away, uh, sort of a, a code red setup, if you will. Perhaps something like that could be, could be implemented. I don't know if that's available. Because, like you said, not everybody has Twitter, not everybody has Facebook, but everybody has a cell phone for the most part. And those that don't are sitting next to somebody that does, and they'll pretty much know what's going on. Um, the next question is, well, I, I know there are onboard surcharges uh, for stops that you, have, you, can't, you, have to, you can buy a ticket at. Will those be waived for everybody? I don't think that's such a big deal. I, I think that should be part of it. Um, and as far as weekend scheduling, that's, I live right near the Rockport station, right behind it. And I see people get off the trains like, like penguins, walking downtown ready to spend their money at our local merchants. And we have the Chamber of Commerce representatives here. We need those people. We're in a tough economic time in Rockport right now. We need those people. R Gloucester needs those people. So we need you folks to do everything you can to make sure we get those people that want to come and spend their money and visit this beautiful part of New England. So I would ask you to take a look at that. Um, and my last question is, is this PowerPoint that you have here available to me or any of the elected officials or the general public? Because it seemed to have some comprehensive yet not, um, uh, not finalized information on it, but it's, it's the best we can get right now. So thank you very much. So I think uh, I'll try to start from the top and work my way down. Fr from the, the ultimately who's responsible for the, the bus shuttle and for the operation of the, the, the additional service, that's me. That's myself and my team within operations. Yeah, that's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. If somebody from, from Rockfoot calls me and says we have a problem, yep. I can call you directly and you're going to handle that. So I, I will give you my email address. So what I would prefer, obviously, is I'm, 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 I am running operations for the MBTA. However, 3200 number, but if you don't get an answer there, yes, I'll give you my, my email address before you leave tonight and you can email me directly. Um, and, and, but ultimately, so it is my responsibility. Now, the responsibility of the actual project and delivering the capital delivery project, that's Beth Larkin that's standing in the back of the room. Uh, Beth is, is kind of my counterpart in the organization, and she is responsible for overseeing these two particular uh, projects. Um, as it relates to, to text alerts, I don't know, Rose, is that something that we could do? All right, so that we'll add that to the list as well of, of potential other, other uh, media options. And then the, the, the last question, I'm sorry, it's, was the, the FAIR issue, correct? Was the FAIR about the surcharge? So, so, so PowerPoint, PowerPoint, that's an easy one. Yes, PowerPoint will be available, correct, Rose? Will it be put up on the website? 
Excellent. Excellent. And we'll get it up on our website. And then do we have anyone have a question on the surcharges for the fares? Do you have an answer for that, Corey? So outside of North Station, the only station that I could think of off the top of my head that might have fair vending at it is Lynn. Um, I think everything else um, does not apply that onboard surcharge. So, Thank you. Speaker number 14, please. I just want to briefly uh, reiterate and underline, um, not that it should need to be uh, uh, reminded, is that for many people, um, they don't have any other means of transportation. The T is their only way to get around. And so if they can't get to work for whatever reason at any time, um, it's not an inconvenience. It's a disaster. So j just a reiteration of I think what's a very important point. Thank you for your comment. Number 15, please, if speaker is still here. Speaker number 16. Joseph Musio, Norman Stone Drive, Rockport. Can you hear me? Speak up. Okay. On May 23rd, my wife and I wrote a letter to the Gloucester Times. I did not put the headline on it, but the headline was, No More Excuses from MBTA. In that letter, I wrote with my wife a number of questions and issues. I would have thought that if anybody on the staff of MBTA reads the Gloucester Times, they would have certainly called, we're public people, and would have tried to resolve some of the matters that are still unresolved tonight. These questions could have been answered May 23rd to now. Even the, the attendance tonight does not reflect the number of people. There was minimal communication regarding this meeting so that in a way, inadvertently or otherwise, you've controlled who's been able to get here. And that for, therefore, that has a disingenuous term to it. That's my interpretation. I think that many of the people have raised very serious questions. I will not repeat them. But I do ask, what happens if the planned work requires additional time for completion? We have no discussion about that. Secondly, the idea and the selectman from Rockport has pointed this out. Both Gloucester and Rockport are summer places. People come here, they enjoy it. They don't go to Cape Cod, they don't go to Provincetown, they come here from Boston and the surrounding areas. You could not have chosen a worse time for the guests, for the residents, for the people that work on weekends, and most of all, for the people that run the entrepreneurs in both towns, they rely on these people. It's a short season. You've cut into the season tremendously. And I think you are making a tragic error in doing so. But I can't, I don't know your field. I recognize there are demands put on all of you, but there's something terribly wrong with this proposal. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We're on number 17, which puts us about halfway through the number of people who've signed up. So we appreciate your brevity. Is there a number 17 still here? That's okay. We'll stay. We'll stay. We'll stay as long as we have to. Why the MBTA will, is going to provide free bus service for only for four weeks? What? Why the MBTA is four weeks? So it, it, the, 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 when the system is shut down, that's when we'll be providing the, the, the supplemental or additional service. So once the rail lines, once the trains start running again. In August, it'll be over. That is for, for weekday service, correct. In August, we'll be resuming service again. That's correct. 
It, it, I, and I should go back to actually to, to a point that, that you had made as well, that, that we have sat down with, on the operations side, with Beth and her team, and there is some time built into this schedule. So there is time, there is contingencies built into the schedule should there be any unexpected delays in what's being presented. Um, so we're hopeful that, that we will be able to adhere to the schedule that's being in there because of these contingencies that have been built into their particular schedule. Also, sir, I mean, the entire commuter rail management team is here on the side of the room. So any particular concerns that you have at the end of this meeting, I'll be more than happy to sit with you and them to listen to what those, those issues and those concerns are. Speaker 18. Pass. 19. Thank you. This is Ken Real, CEO, Cape Ann Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to expand on the, the business uh, elements of the plan that's, that's been described here this evening. And um, first of all, I'll begin by um, reiterating what a few people here have said this evening, and that Cape Ann has really become a, a premier visitor destination. Um, we estimate that we have well over 500,000 visitors to the region annually. Most of those are during the summer months, exactly during the time of the planned shutdown of the rail. We know, for example, in Rockport that visitors come up from Boston for the day to enjoy the beautiful harbor, swim, eat, dinner, and shop. We also know that many innkeepers pick up guests every single week from Boston. These guests enjoy all that Rockport has to offer. They also shop and eat in town. If they are not in town, it is a trickle-down effect to all of the other local small businesses. We know in Gloucester that hundreds of visitors arrive daily to enjoy all that this city has to offer. The beaches, the shopping, the great restaurants, the amazing water attractions, such as our schooners, the water shuttle, and fishing. We know in Manchester that thousands of visitors come up from Boston and enjoy, um, and around the North Shore, and enjoy Singing Beach and the uh, surrounding harbor, and again, while they're in Manchester, enjoy all that the town has to offer and eating and shopping locally. From the Manchester town administrator, um, he has estimated that the loss in beach revenue alone will be well over $100,000, and that's not to add the complication of all the additional parking and traffic that's now going to be required by those people instead coming by car. There are businesses in Manchester and all three of these communities that will be greatly impacted by the loss of the service. Cape Ann Small Business has become incredibly dependent on our visitors. As small business is impacted, so is large business. As large business is impacted, so is the entire Cape Ann community. The peak, the very peak of the visitor season is exactly during the time of the planned shutdown. To be clear, the question is not whether the shutdown will impact local business and the economy. The question is how many businesses will not survive this shutdown and the severity of the economic impact to the region. It appears that the work will not be rescheduled. I concur with the uh, selectman from Rockport, Don Campbell, that it's very disappointing that here we are at this 11th hour to hear these plans. The buses are not going to solve the loss of the visitors to the region. Most visitors from Boston are not going to get on a bus and come two hours to Cape Ann. We are going to lose those visitors that we see every summer. I don't know if it's too late to ask you to reconsider the, the timing of this, but, but ultimately that's the only thing that's going to work for the economic impacts of the region. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number 19, speaker number 20, pass, speaker 21, pass, 22. Hi, my name's Amanda Nash. I uh, live about a block from the train station in downtown Gloucester. I don't take the train myself, but I do see people coming and going. And, uh, and uh, I don't see too many of those people here. I, I don't see too many shopkeepers. I don't see any innkeepers. I, I, don't, I, I think the communication here has been just awful. I, the whole process has been incredibly arrogant. You, you seem like a nice person. All these people seem like nice, nice people, but the, the process has been arrogant. 
You have not considered any of what, what the, the clients, your, your clients need. The, the, most, uh, the most distinctive thing to me is the, the, the lack of consideration to our tourism business. You, you, can't, you can't do that to a town. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have a really bad effect. And uh, the, the idea of communicating with people through Twitter, oh, I don't know who you think your clients are, but th this is laughable. Um, not enough input from the local government people before the, I mean, the, you started off badly with, the, with not even coming up with, a, with an alternative service, and you're still operating at a big disadvantage. You really need to consider what people are saying to you here. The, the idea that everybody here is saying it seems like it's a done deal, you're not, you're not considering changing the schedule, that is insanity. You need, to, you need to consider changing the schedule at the very least. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker 23. Hi, um, my name is Lucinda Seigel and I'm in Rockport and I'm in small business. Um, we're not big onto tourists yet, but we're moving a little bit more in that direction. So um, I'll also concur just a very couple points, and then I have a couple, hopefully, a suggestion. Um, first, change the schedule. <laughs> that, 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 that's number one. Um, two, communicate better, because the first thing I have very low potential for, but the second one is I think you guys can do a lot better. There's not a lot of people here tonight relative to the number of people that are walking on the street. I take the trains in the morning. People aren't here. Third, I'm very concerned about the weekends, and then many people here have legitimate con concerns about the weekdays. Um, right now, that's, that is a concern, but I think about the weekends, and I think that some things can be done. First of all, and again, because I distrust the communications capabilities, I would suggest that there needs to be an organization that is promoting travel to Gloucester and Rockport. I need, you were talking about coordinating with CEOs and uh, corporate um, um, committee people and that kind of thing, and HR departments. I think you need to communicate with hotels and explain to them the options for, for coming up to Gloucester. There needs to be an outreach that comes partly from Gloucester and partly from Rockport. They already have people that do that and get down and promote in Boston. Those should be coordinated at the train station. There should be a kiosk in the train station saying, because when you look at people coming up here on the weekends, and I'm talking um, to our representative over there, we have the same view. You see people laden down with, um, see to, uh, water toys, you see suitcases, you see all sorts of things. I don't know what you're thinking for, for the weekend travel, but you need under storage then if you're going to be doing that. And, I'm not, and I haven't heard anything about that. You need to be able to get people here on the weekends. Car rental places. I think that if you're at this train station, and I've been at the train station and I've had that window experience where someone will say, oh, actually, I just don't know anything about that, and maybe you'll find something out. The answer is that's the wrong answer. You need an answer which is a handout sheet, not look it up on a little, um, uh, on, your, on your handheld, and be able to see. Here are alternative ways to get to Gloucester and Rockport. And, by the way, on the back side, here's a lot of fun things to do here that weekend, because I know you're from Virginia and you had no idea that this was ever going to be canceled, you were going to have these problems. You need to make it easy for those people to reach out. Um, just a couple more things. So. Um, I think the summary is you know, there needs to be coordination with the other travel modes to get up here. There needs to be promotion, promotion for Gloucester, for Rockport. I know that's not the business that you're in. I hear about all the, op I'm an engineer. I hear all the operational stuff. Okay, I love that stuff. But that's not, that's not the part that works. You need to have the heart. You need to be able to get people here. And you need to participate into that. And I think that would help a lot. Okay, I think those are a couple of very good suggestions. Uh, I mean, R Rose, I think putting together the, the flyer for P 
people to be able to hand out, particularly at North Station, South Station. I think that's something we certainly can do. And then reaching out to all the various chambers that would, I would assume that many of the hotels, restaurants as well. I think that, that is that part of our communication plan, folks? To reach out to, to, to various chambers of commerce in, this particular, in these areas? So I, I, I mean, one of the things I, I am overwhelmingly hearing tonight is communications and communication. So I think I, I will commit that as we go forward, we will do a better job, you know, communicating to people of what at least for for for, all, for uh, some of the alternatives are. Number twenty-four, please. Speaker, oh, twenty-four. Yep. Here we are. Thank you. My name is Kimberly, and I'm starting a new sightseeing bus tour up in Cape Ann. And getting people here is paramount. Lucinda, you did a very excellent job, exactly what I wanted to say. I would just like to add to that, that weekend travelers are here to enjoy their day in an hour and a half each way is not enjoyable on a bus. If we could consider other options of these direct lines, even just a handful of times a day to get them directly from Boston, North Station, or even another spot in Boston, up to Gloucester and Rockport, ideal number one. I don't know if you considered the water su shuttle. I, cruise port may not be huge, but it can accept small crafts. Um, and that is another more enjoyable way for tourists and for others to travel that could be a bit quicker than that hour and a half. And I, again, promoting to hotels and to others in the tourist industry, perhaps at the airports, having some greater promotion to get them here. We lose a lot of business to the other Cape, and we, we really cannot afford to lose it. You know, as a new business starting just this year, this is a bad year not to have a train. I just, before you, before you leave, I just wanted to uh, add a point in here that the Senator and I didn't mention earlier. Um, the mayor, the senator, and I are also working with the Secretary of Transportation to see if we can bring ferry service up to Gloucester. So, just so you know, that's, I, I don't want to make any promises because we haven't had a chance to flesh that idea out yet thoroughly, but I just want to let you know that in addition to what's being presented here, we're also pr pr uh, pursuing that, and that would be Gloucester, Salem, Lynn, Boston four steps, so it might help to solve the, the Lynn issue. I know it's not ideal because of the weather we've been having, but it would just be another option to help get people here. Thank you. Speaker number 25, 26, oh, 25. Well, we're on 25, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you said 35. Go ahead, sir. Now, very, very briefly, uh, I understand the needs of construction weather and so forth, but I also understand the needs of the uh, tourist industry and the economic industry, and I do question the timing of this project. I think the uh, idea of a ferry is a brilliant one. That's a pleasant way to come, much better than an overcrowded bus. But uh, I'm not sure how it could be implemented, but I do question, seriously question, the timing of this project, even though the needs of construction season are what they are. Understood. Thank you. S Speaker 26. Speaker number 26. Six or seven? Seven. 27. I thank you. I'm Mary Jo Feuerbach, and I'm actually from Manchester because I didn't see any public meetings for our town. Um, first off, I wanted to say I'm really happy and pleased to see that you are planning to have bus service from each of the major towns. However, I can't help but feel for the people who are not so lucky and who typically use a stop that will no longer be serviced through this. Um, how are they going to actually get to these stops? I personally commute from Manchester every morning. Our lot is filled by the 7.30 train. So 
and that's just with our two towns. Basically, Manchester and folks from Gloucester commute over to our lot. So how are you going to handle parking when it's not just Gloucester and Manchester in that lot, but you've got folks you know, from all around trying to get, for instance, to these stops in order to commute in? I, I'm just wondering how, how in the world you're going to deal with that. Um, and I also, uh, several people have talked about having direct buses from the towns. I'd really ask that you seriously consider that um, because it would alleviate those problems with parking at the small number of stops that you're actually proposing right now to service. Um, and, you know, the idea that you, you know, will see if a bus is full and if nobody on that bus happens to need one of the intermediary stops, maybe you'd take it straight to Salem. I mean, that's just kind of crazy. I mean, if one person is on that bus and they typically, as part of their job, need to commute, say, from Gloucester to Manchester, the whole bus is being held up as opposed to having some dedicated buses that would run straight from Gloucester to Salem, for instance. I, I, I just can't imagine you can't do better than what's being proposed right now. Um, I question what happens when buses are full for the stops that are further down in the line. How are you going to deal with that? Um, you mentioned having several buses at one time. Are you saying you're going to have five, six, seven buses arriving all at once at a station? I mean, I can imagine the delays of everybody getting on those buses. So I, 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 are, you, are you rotating them even though you mention a set time for each stop? Because I don't see how else it's possibly going to happen. Right. Um, uh, let me see what else did I want to mention. Oh, somebody mentioned handing out the schedule a week beforehand. Um, for people like me who depend on my job to pay the bills, you need to give people more than a week handing out a schedule. I mean, this is going to be disruptive. People are going to be getting to work late. They're going to have to um, wait up to you know an hour past their typical end time in order to find a convenient bus they can get home. I mean, you've, you've got to give people as much notice as possible in order to make this as bearable as it could possibly be. Um, and a couple other things, sorry, I know you want to rush me out. Um, tele I'd, I'd ask that you really do consider promoting telecommuting. Not everybody can do that as part of their job, but for people who are in a situation where telecuting, telecommuting is an option, having the MBTA and our representatives and our senators encouraging businesses to allow their employees to telecommute, that will make the commute easier for those who cannot do that. So I'd really encourage you to consider that. And the last, I too have to echo that shutting off all service on weekends in the summer. I can't imagine a worse time. We're the North Shore. We're coastal communities. We depend on our beaches for our tourism, Rockport, Gloucester, but Manchester too. Hundreds of people get off of the stop every single, uh, off of every single train that goes by to walk to Singing Beach all summer long. And our businesses need that business too in order to survive. Thank you. Understood. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, speaker number 28. Hey, how you doing? I, uh, I work in logistics and transportation, and um, I commute into the city every day from Rockport. My commute is uh, two hours each way every day um, because when I get to North Station, I have to then get across town, and there's no easy way to do that. So I either walk or I take the T or whatever. I figure something out. So that's an extra half hour, 40 minutes just to my commute because there's no easy access between those two, North Station and South Station. The schedule that you put together here, um, from a logistics and transportation standpoint, I believe there could be some, some work to be done on it, um, specifically with respect to the Beverly stop. You had mentioned early on that you were going to run a 10-minute shuttle every, every 10 minutes between, between Salem and Beverly. And if you're able, it, by the time you get through Rockport, Gloucester, Manchester, those, tra those buses are going to be full. So what's the point in even stopping in, in Beverly anyway? So I know you're talking about 
you know, dealing with it on the fly, but you guys have done the research. You know your numbers. You, you know what the expectation is. So from a, planning, from a planning standpoint, it would seem to me that you're already going to know when you're going to fill up and when you're going to need to cut that to cut that bus off. So a little advanced notice, in, and especially if, uh, with respect to the, what the woman was just saying in planning, I already have a two-hour commute. If you're able to cut out that one stop, you know, and you tell me now, then I'm going to say, I'm, maybe I'm going to make a different decision, and maybe I'm going to take the bus, or maybe I'm going to drive if that's not the option. I'm looking at a two-and-a-half-hour commute. You know, so these are going to help people. These, these type of planning and detail points are going to help people make better decisions for their day. Um, another woman had mentioned um, that she was very upset and she left. Um, she lives in the Beverly area, um, so you know potentially you run another loop, a loop shuttle for the Beverly and, and, and that service um, into into Salem. Um, just you know, just an idea. Um, so so I, we will be. So there is three shuttles: Newburyport, Rockport, and then one that's constantly running between Beverly and Salem nonstop. Okay. okay. All right. So. Um, and then, and then finally, um, just with respect to, you know, you had mentioned early on that, you know, there was, it was just, it was a no, no questions asked. You, you, already, you already decided that you, you can't have trains on the north side of the bridge, um, but you have a lot of termination points on this side, you know, Rockport being one of them, where we can hold, you know, we have three or four tracks. Four tracks, um, right. And, you know, can you, get, can you get service equipment, can you get service people and stations across the bridge before the, before the termination of service so that you could offer that as a more expeditious, uh, expeditious you know, process? Um, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've done a lot of thinking on this, but uh, I would vet that out pretty, 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 pretty rough to see if, because that would, that would make so much, so much more sense and if you were able to, to do something like that. You get your engineers and just, you know, have an off-site you know, service station on, on the other I, side. That, that, that was something that we really did discuss a lot and something that the team from Railroad Operations put a lot of time into looking at just providing a, essentially a shuttle back and forth. And I, I, again, worst case scenario, and unfortunately that's what we have to think for, through from a transportation standpoint, worst case scenario is even if we had those spare locomotives and we lost those locomotives, we would have to scramble to find 60 buses to operate on this particular shuttle and then find a way to notify all of our customers that guess what this this shuttle bridge that we wanted to run just is not possible to run so we really did look into that that by believe me that would have been the preferred alternative for all of us to do and offer that but ultimately the decision was made because it was just too great of a risk to do this thank you i know <clears throat> number 29 has been patiently waiting Hi, Sherry Lewis, Magnolia Ave, Gloucester. Hi, how are you? Hi. I was wondering, um, I was unaware of the bike situation, but what about mothers and carriages? And like this woman said, people bring all kinds of luggage from Absolutely. Boston. What is going to happen? Absolutely. So, so carriages, um, coolers, the, 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 you know, we have them for my family, the little the beach buggies, all of those will be allowed on the bus. It's just bicycles. Bicycles will not be allowed on the bus. For, for particularly during the week they commute inbound. Okay, and inbound. one final question. Is there anything that you need to disclose that I don't know enough to ask about right now? So that is a really good question. And to be honest with you, if I knew the answer to that, I would be telling you right now. Um, I, I guess the easiest thing, easiest way to answer that question is that this is not a preferred alternative. This is not going to be an easy shuttle for us to be able to manage from a, a transportation logistics standpoint. Um, but other than that, no, I think we're being completely honest about kind of the difficulties and the challenges of this and what we're trying to do to really mitigate that. Thank you. Number 30. Here we go. <clears throat> Lisa Bartlett, I own one of those small businesses in Manchester that depends heavily on the daily weekend train traffic. I have two comments. Um, back in the 80s, the Beverly-Salem Bridge was out of commission for over a year, and the trains ran north of, they ran from Beverly north and from Salem south with a shuttle just running from Beverly to Salem. At least that's my understanding. That was for over a year. Why can't the MBTA do that for one month? And my other question is, it's been asked a lot tonight, but it has not yet been answered. Why does it have to be July 8th to September 30th? Why can't it be Sept 
September 8th to November 30th, or October 8th to December 30th? So I think we, we kind of touched upon this. I can certainly say that both Secretary Pollock and, and General Manager Shortsleeve sat down with Beth and her team and asked those very questions. And I think it's the matter of when we're federally mandated to really move forward with the PTs. So uh, again, it's my understanding that really, in order to get this project done as efficiently as possible, the decision was made to move forward during that schedule. So that's the best I can answer right now. So you're planning on taking another extra 14 months on top of what the plan was? Again, that's the best that I can answer the question right now. Number th but it's the best 31. Sure, I mean. About the, uh, the Beverly draw in 1985, um, I just confirmed with our AGM who was, was around at that point in time, because um, I was you know, a little tyke at that point. But um, the, the Beverly draw in 85 actually did, did have a fire and service was suspended. And the railroad at that point in time, they had one locomotive trapped on the Gloucester Rockport side of the, of, the, of, the, of the bridge, and they actually trucked it back into Boston. So train service did not run during that period of time. Unfortunately, the, with the bridge being out, it cuts us off from basically the entire rest of the rest of the rail network of the country um, for this period of time. Thirty-one. Speaker number thirty-two. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Okay. Hi, I'm Catherine. Um, I'm also on the Tourism Commission, so a couple questions I have are related to that. I wanted to suggest that you use terms express and local, because I think people really understand that, and I'm, I haven't heard that yet. Um, I wanted to ask, have you tried a sample route along the, um, the whole 27 route in, which is longer normally, but it is scenic, and I'm just curious on the weekends, instead of just the 128 Route 1 route. Dave, do you want to take that? Yes, we have, um, we have done the 127 routing. We've done 128. We've done a number of different things. We, we think that 128 is going to be the quicker route most of the time. Right. But we are going to evaluate as we go along and try and make decisions as we go so we can hit all the right routes as quickly as possible. Is there an incentive for the contract finishing fast? Beth Larkin, is Beth still here? Okay, I'll keep going. Um, the other question I have is related to paying us. <laughs> um, I think that it, if it can be done in the amount of time that you're saying, it's gonna be a drag for everybody for an express amount of time. If you have it as a free ride and you're encouraging people to take the train because it is such a hassle, whether you're commuting or not, I already know people are not going to be able to plan for this for work. Some people will. A lot of people won't. I have seven people that were coming from Spain that I was giving art tours to in um, September who wanted to stay here and visit Boston, visit Salem, but this would be their location, not now. Now they want Salem, I mean, now they want Boston. Um, the other thing that I didn't hear tonight, but I know you all have talked about, is the employees. Um, we don't have Uber, and we only have two taxis here. Um, Beauport, at least six of the staff that I've talked to lives in Beverly and works there. It, the Tourism Commission has been hearing a lot from the restaurant and the shops for their employees using the train. So it's coming here. Sure. So maybe if it's just really promoted as take the train, it's a hassle, it's free, it's actually maybe even less of an overhead for you guys to plan it out. That's, that's it. Except for the one that you were going to get back to me on, on the incentive for the contract. Is that you? So Beth, the question is, is there any incentives built into the contract to, to, uh, to offer uh, bonuses or, or incentives for delivery? I'm or, say. It, correct, Dur finishing ahead of schedule. Okay, so I wanna talk about, there's two contractors involved. Mm -hmm. So one of them has to do with the installation of the, of the movable portion of the bridge, yeah. right? 
So in that instance, um, there's no incentive. We don't have incentives. We have disincentives if they don't meet the dates. But there is a there is a seven day period in which we have for testing after it's installed. So when Jeff had previously mentioned about contingency, 21 days to install the swing span, and then seven days, which again is generous to do the testing. Mm -hmm. So no incentives other than getting in and getting out. The reason why we're doing that in the summer is because we've got time of year work restrictions in the water. Mm -hmm. I do want to say there's a lot of questions about why, why are we doing things when we are doing them. And if I can, it's all right to answer that. So it started with the bridge. Mm -hmm. So it's really a one in a hundred year um, work activity. And I love, I love the sign up on the, up on the wall, build not for today alone, but build for, but for tomorrow as well. And really, that's what this is all about. We're trying to get the infrastructure to a point where we don't have to be having um, these type of um, disturbances. So that was the first thing, the bridge. And I think everybody understands the condition of the structure. In terms of then being able to take advantage of that 28 days for our PTC systems um, integrator to go out and put the PTC, 28 days of 24-7 being able to do that we can take 27 weekends worth of work and compress it down to 13. Within that 13 weeks, we have a two-week um, buffer at the end mm -hmm. in, case, in case we need it. We're desperately trying to work to minimize that. But right now, we've got the 13 planned weekends. What's our incentive to do that? Our incentive on the PTC program, all of the lines are supposed to be up and running with PTC installed by the end of, um, by the end of December 2018. The MBTA will not achieve that because of the time in which we started. The process for being compliant is being able to put all of the hardware in, which is all of the poles, the antennas along the wayside, which is the work that we're going to be doing during the weekend shutdowns, in order to apply for an extension. So we are desperately moving forward to apply for the extension. If we were not to achieve this, the extension, it's a $105,000 a day penalty to the MBTA. So there's a huge motivation to get this work done in a timely way. And our partner, Ensaldo, who's been um, has our um, system integrator for this work, you know, is we've got everybody working together, Keolis, MBTA, Ensaldo, to make sure that we get not just this line, but all of the lines installed. OK. So I still, if you consider the 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 hassle, the hassle fee, the hassle waiver, whatever you want to call it, I think the economic benefit of maybe us as a, a catch basin for some of that economic return will come back to you guys on another, you know, on the economic side of spending. Because I, I really think it's going to, to hit. I think that com concludes our speakers. I'll come back. Okay. I just want to say that I feel like pushing this to the last minute does not really give us a lot of confidence that this bus stuff is going to work efficiently. That actually what's going to happen is we're going to have absolutely, we're going to have chaos and that there will be almost no communication from the organization. And so we're going to be sitting there looking at each other going, not only is our economics, uh, economic situation going to be horrible here and sad, and it will deprive people who come from Europe, from all over the country, to this beautiful place. They're not going to get here. But also, I think that asking us to trust that this bus thing is going to be efficient is a little much when I, we consider that, you almost, that, the, that we barely knew about this until a couple of weeks in advance. So it makes me feel extremely nervous that I'm not going to get to work on time and that I'll have to spend the night in North Station because I'm going to miss all the buses back to Salem because they're not going to run on time either. So I'm just, you know, my New York accent comes out when I get very upset. But I am very upset, let me tell you, because I don't trust that these plans have really been vetted in such a way that our communities are not going to be clobbered and our people are not going to be spending the whole summer very, very upset and very, very, very 
um, pessimistic about ending on time, even. Understood. Understood. Thank you. I believe there's a few more. Have, have you considered uh, having the positive train control fix go between, say, midnight and 6 a.m. in the morning? I mean, you see busy roads where they do all the work at night. You have rail cars that could have high intensity lights. Have, have you considered that at all? So I, I again, so I, I think Beth, had, you want to answer the question, Beth? That's going to be going on all during this time period. So it's not just the weekends that the um, we've, that we've got our systems integrator out there working. They're going to be out there every night already. This is in addition to the weeknights, as you just described, is the weekends. Just so everyone has a, a sense of one weekend equals two weeks of nighttime work. So that's really the driving force, again, behind getting this done on this line as well as all the rest of the lines. Thank you. I think we have time for a few more. Thank you. Um, so is it, is it, can we walk away with an answer to the question, is there any possibility that the timeline will shift to another time of year? As, as the lead for the MBTA here right now, I can tell you that I will take that back. I'll present it to no, I'd like an answer. I, I mean, if, if the answer is no, please tell us. So I will tell you right now, the, our plan is to move forward with the schedule as we're seeing here and as we're presenting right now. Um, so for, for, for this evening, the answer is going to have difficult as ever for me to say, but it's going to have to be no because you're going to have to plan for what we're going to be offering for, for, for this uh, alternative service. So I would just recommend that this is going to be a PR disaster for the MBTA and that you hire a firm now to deal with what's going to happen when this actually takes place. It, it's going to be an economic disaster for this part of uh, the state. And there, I just don't see how the bus service, which you, you've laid out and already said it's not going to work um, because it's not ideal. It's not just not ideal. It can't work. Stopping in, for, going from Rockport to Gloucester to Manchester to Beverly and thinking that you're going to get people in, through that in the period of time that you have in your schedule, it just can't happen. Have you actually sent people out to do the routes? Well, that surprises me because I drive that route every day and it so doesn't work. Good. So we, we, I, I hope you're right. But, yeah. But to, to your point, again, I, we're going to do everything we can to make this a success. I don't want to stand up here and say, so you're right. Is this going to be an easy shuttle for, for Dave and his team to manage? It's not going to be. We're going to do our best. Thank you, everyone. For your, uh, one more? One more. Thank you. I'm looking at the schedule, and you give 15 minutes between Gloucester and Rockport, and 15 minutes between Gloucester, or Gloucester and Manchester. Um, it takes 15 minutes to drive that distance. Then you've got to stand there while 100 people get onto the bus, and then while I get off the bus with my 10 million pound suitcase. It's already wrong. So that's one point. The second point I'd like to make, I don't commute. Um, I'm here on behalf of my daughter who does commute. She works for minimum wage. Um, there's no extra money in her budget to pay for an Uber or to do other things. A long time ago, I took the train from Gloucester into Beverly Farms. I was working at minimum wage. This would have caused me to lose my job. It's just, and it, People in Beverly Farms are working there because they have to work, not because they're rich. Thank you very much. So uh, the mayor is going to close out. We had one gentleman that's going to make, he promised me to be very brief. He spoke before. Um, we appreciate all your patience. And we're here because we're listening. We understand. It's, it's, you, it's very difficult to do these major infrastructure projects. We all know these bridges, that bridge is going to get replaced in 28 days. If it broke down for a year again, nobody would want that and there wouldn't be the alternative to do this. These take years. These will last for generations. So we understand and, and serve all your businesses and communities for generations. So we appreciate, I just want to say before we close up, we appreciate all this, uh, all your feedback. We're going to take it back and work with it. I'll give it over to this gentleman very quick. Very quick. Thank you.
Okay. Um, it, again, it's been asked rhetorically. It's been asked outright. And uh, I, I, I'd formally like to ask for a, an opinion from the T to see if we can move this. We're only talking probably a matter of six weeks. If we could, fo if we could do that, everybody here is willing to bend and to work with you folks. You have to be willing to work with us as well, because you're pretty much telling us, here's your pill, swallow it, and we have no recourse. We might be able to tweak a bus schedule, but we're asking you, you're hitting us at the worst possible time of the year. Please, get us an answer, and, and I want that should be a public answer communicated to the town officials and the city officials that states the reasons why we can, which would be great, or if we cannot, why as well. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Madam Mayor. Okay, first of all, thank you. And yes, we do, yes, we do do text, and I was texting actually Bruce from someone who was in here who said, I really want to scream, but I wanted to ask, can you update the, MT, the MBTA apps? because they're not updated all the time. And also, um, half an hour parking updates isn't enough. I say 15 minute updates, because if you're driving one place and it's full or something, you know, then they gotta go re-around. So, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. I try to be quiet, try to be neutral, but you know what? You're hearing lack of confidence. We just want to know the truth. And, and, and I really, as my, my community, um, West Gloucester, I mean, a lot of people, don't they they you have a wellsprings you have other programs um, that take and they walk to the train station so I'm, I'm hoping that you because I trust no offense to you but I trust my local cater I, it's a local bus company that we all trust they know the routes they know there's around here kind of offensive that you didn't work with us on that issue around KPM because they know KPN so I wish now I have they here I wish you would reach out to them and at least do something that and think about that bus be honest Everyone, look. We know that the train, we know, we've all complained, either damn if you do, damn if you don't, we need it fixed. We had meetings, no one showed up. I've been getting some information and we've been talking. The federal government has given us money, it's mandated. If they're giving us money, they're telling us when to do it, not to do it. And we might never get the money again. You know what's happening in the country right now. You need to be honest and say, look, you're getting some of the money from the federal government, and if we don't hurry up and do this, we're not going to be able to do it and it'll be on the taxpayers. So to have a wish that you're telling us, well, I'll bring it back, maybe can change dates, it's not. But since we know that the dates will not change because we've been asking and we've been asking and we've been asking, not the, everyone's been asking, Salem, Driscoll, the mayors, we've been meeting, we've been asking, and it's not gonna happen. Can you work with us, give us some confidence, do some trial runs, even if you have the trains running, even if you have the trains running, Say you're gonna do a trial run. Do some trial runs before you have that date so everyone knows where they're gonna do, just in case. Try some things first. You have a train going on and all of a sudden it's gonna go and it's gonna be mass confusion. Why don't you say we're picking this week, anyone who wants to ride the bus and try the trial runs so you know what route and how long it will take you so they'll know, can you do that? Well, That's all we're asking, trial runs. So we, we have done that with our own not with you, with the people. That's what I'm saying. So we, I, I'm, I'm more than willing. No offense. No, no, none taken. Uh, more than willing to commit today that we would do something like that. Absolutely, because have her with her cane, her with her thing, have someone with their bike, have someone do a trial run and see. So we can make suggestions to you, say it's not going to work, try this one, work with this one. Kata will get us to this one here. Can you pick us up from there? Because if you don't have pocket, maybe Kata can get us there. They're waiting and we transfer. People don't mind transferring. They're used to inconvenience. We're used to everything you can think of. We live on an island, and Rock puts part of us, and so is in Manchester and Essex. So it's not the inconvenience, it's not being told. Sure. Thank you. So, and we can coordinate that through your office, Mary Driscoll's office. We'll coordinate it through all, each of your office, but we can do that. So it, it's been a long night, and I appreciate a lot of the comments that people have made, and I'm not going to reiterate, there's been a lot of good suggestions, and I've been writing them down, and we all have. I just do want to make sure that we absolutely exhaust every opportunity to change the timing of the project. Now let's drill down into that for a minute because the legislative delegation has been trying to focus on this and work with all of you, right? So to be clear, and it's already been explained once, let me try it a different way. As I understand it and as we understand it, there are two deadlines that are operative here. The first is to have all of the equipment installed for positive train control. That deadline is December of 2018. As I understand it, and I stand to be corrected, that enables us to get a waiver to kick us out to f having positive train control fully operational. So that tells us something 
that's important. Obviously, we're dealing with a federal mandate, right? This is not a decision that was made by the MBTA to install positive train control. And again, I'm going to reiterate that positive train control is a critically important safety feature, and the absence of it has caused disastrous consequences in some parts of this country. But that tells us that we're already seeking a waiver. So two points I think are important. One is, is there any opportunity to get a waiver from the first deadline? And we've reached out to the federal legislative delegation, and they are certainly willing to be helpful if we all think that that is a possibility. Because for all the good suggestions that have been made, I think we all understand there is nothing that's equivalent to changing the time frame of this. That being said, if we are able to change the time schedule, that means we will still have to deal with all of these other issues just at a different time of year. I wouldn't want anyone to think that that's a, a magic wand that makes all of this go away. So that's point number one. Point number two, my understanding is that in other parts of the country, train service has not been interrupted to install positive train control. And the reason for that is the scheduling is such that they were able to use flaggers and safety crews to stop trains from moving at important times so that the people that are installing the PTC are not imperiled. I would ask if we could take one more look at that. And the reason for that is I know it's disruptive to stop the train during the route. But from the disruptions we've heard about tonight, it may still be less bad than what we're otherwise going to have to face. And I think we need to exhaust that possibility as well. Third point. Tonight we haven't discussed at all the fact that the Anasquam draw is going to have to be replaced. And I would just ask everyone that's involved to bear in mind that people are going to have to suffer one way or the other some incredible sacrifices, some incredible hardships to get through this period. And I want to make sure that we don't repeat that with the Anasquam draw replacement so that people don't have to go through all of this and then still have another problem yet to come. Now, the current plan for the Anasquam draw is to replace it in segments so that the train most of the time can stay running. I just want to remind folks that are here from the MBTA how important that is to keep that as part of the plan because it would be absolutely unacceptable to have everyone go through all of this and then have another disruption when the Anasquam draw is replaced. Now, we know that there may be one or two days that you, you may not be able to, to do that, but most of the time to keep the train running is important. My last point is this. We went a long time without good communication, and I think that's why there's a lot of frustration tonight. It's totally understandable. You've acknowledged it. We cannot go forward without communication at regular intervals. So what I would ask is that we come up with answers to these questions, and particularly the timing ones, and then come back as soon as possible to a forum like this. We will do everything we can as a legislative delegation to get the word out, to promote that, to let people know. And we absolutely have to put a full court press on with information. So one of the things that I mentioned when we met the other day was on every platform, there should be a place to get a flyer so that it can be taken for, by people, whether they're going to ride the train that day or not. And then we have to continue to push out information as much as we possibly can. This isn't a good situation, and it's not a good situation because there have been years of delay, and now we're trying to cram this work into a short period of time. It is what it is, and we have to live with it. But we need to make sure we exhaust every option to make it better before we hunker down like we do on Cape Ann, and we deal with it. And so those are my only thoughts to close us out, and, and I appreciate you guys coming out a lot, and the work that's gone into this a lot, it's just that we, we owe it to ourselves to make sure that we haven't left any option on the table unexplored. Thanks. Thank you. So I, I guess in closing, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Um, again, certainly this is, these are both very important infrastructure projects for us here at the MBTA. And again, we're going to do everything we possibly can to minimize the impact that each of you have. So thank you. <laughs>